Hey guys, so I'm having an interesting issue with my air condition system, uh, which I wanted to share um, how I'm going to be approaching to fix it. So basically, uh, my unit was turning on and off, on and off, and uh, basically I came in and checked the pressure, and when I tested the pressure, it was pretty uh, low, you know. So there was some refrigerant in there, but wasn't a whole lot. was showing me around 50 psi you know which is pretty low so that kind of gave an indication that my uh, gas has leaked you know it's a 410a system uh, about 10 year old um, and uh, so I decided to pull a vacuum and see if the lines um, have any leak you know I kind of suspect my valve is leaking the Parker valve what I did was I changed my Schrader valve um, cores you know um, these are the new cores but I just removed them so I can pull a good vacuum uh, without the belt being there. So what I'm planning on doing is um, uh, initially what I did was uh, whatever gas was left in the lines, I turned the unit on and closed this valve and sucked everything from here. So all the refrigerant, uh, I don't think there is a whole lot, you know, but whatever was left, I kind of put it in the compressor and I locked it up, put it down. Uh, so if it's kind of tight, I can't open it right now. but. Uh, that thing was tied in all the way down so these two valves are closed right now they're down seated um, so they're all closed and this is my setup basically this is how I'm gonna pull the vacuum so this is my CPS VG200 um, this is my apion gauge right here and this is my apion so I don't I'm not using three apions some people use three apions to isolate this but I'm just using a regular uh, connector right here so I can isolate my gauge you know once I'm putting refrigerant in there uh, but anyway, so I'm going to make sure everything is open. So this is all open, this is open, and this is open. And uh, this is my setup, so the yellow one goes right here. And I do have one right here as well, so I can control that. This is a little bit loose, you know, once I start the, this is a little bit loose, so once I start the pump, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this. This is nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and open these. If there's not enough mat vacuum, it's not going to measure it. So it really measures down to when you have a really good vacuum on the system, that's when it starts measuring. So right now, I didn't do anything. I just kept, kept the pump running and finally, like, it starts reading. Uh, so right now, I'm at 3,500, somewhere around there, and it's dropping down, and it's, it may take a while. So it's been about maybe five minutes or so and it's running and uh, for me to get down to 500 microns I'm just gonna leave that pump running and even though I don't see any moisture coming out there was a lot of moisture I could see earlier uh, that was coming out but right now I don't see any so I'm just going to let it run and uh, wait for it to keep dropping down to about 500 microns or maybe a little bit lower okay so I'm at 500 microns and uh, it's been about two hours. In fact, you don't really have to leave it for that long. I just happened to step out and it's been about two hours and it's been pretty consistent with 500 microns. So you can go a little bit lower, you know. Um, my system is a little bit older, so I don't wanna pull anything more than what's required. So, um, and as you can see, for me to test it, I have uh, closed on these valves right here. This one right here. So it's measuring the pressure right on these lines. You know, my valves are all the way down seated. So that kind of gives me an indication there is no leak uh, on the inside unit and uh, on any of those lines. So I think with this, I'm ready to release my charge. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go ahead and open this valve, open this valve and then uh, undo the bolt on this one and that one and that would release the charge in the system and then we're gonna put it to proper charge uh, once uh, we release whatever refrigerant is inside the compressor and then we can charge it up properly from the liquid side. Okay, so I have everything connected. Um, so this is my bottle and um, I'm gonna zero out the scale. So this is at zero right now. And uh, my yellow gauge is coming all the way up here, connected right here. 
this is where I'm going to purge uh, once I release the gas but right now I'm not filling up the system all I'm doing is I'm going to open up the valve first I'm going to open up this one to release the gas in the low pressure side and then I'm going to do the high pressure side this is a carrier unit you have to check your uh, manufacturer which one or how do they prefer to do it uh, before I do that I want to make sure I isolate my micron gauge so under 500 microns and it's been a study so far and uh, I don't have uh, the other one but I'm gonna go ahead and open up with this allen key I open up the this side and I open up that side and uh, the pressure is in the lines and now I just need to check my pressure and uh, top off the system. So what I'm doing is I'm charging my system right now. Um, I had already pulled the vacuum like I showed you before and uh, I released the pressure into my lines and I was sure there was no lack, uh, there was no leaks and now I'm filling it up because my refrigerant is pretty low. So I do have some, but I'm going to go ahead and purge the line right here. That's enough. And uh, right from here as well. This should be the pressure coming from the system. Okay, so right, nothing is coming right now and I just noticed that my valves are closed that's why <laughs> good test so I need to make sure these two are closed and since these valves are closed I'm gonna have to go and open this and there you go now I have positive pressure in both lines oh, this line and the other red one there you go so now you can see the pressure came up and now I'm gonna go ahead and release some of the pressure hoses on the lines and I think now we're ready to charge the system so I'm gonna go ahead and charge it from the liquid side because my pressure was very low once I turn the system on it just drops down very low so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill up some gas but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my scale and see how much I'm putting it in the system calls for five pounds right now I have put in like maybe one Right now it's increasing. 1.3, 5 pounds. I'm charging this as a liquid in the liquid form. So I may do two and a half pounds and then see how it behaves. Right now I'm at about two and a half pounds I have put in into the system and now my pressures are a little bit higher. So now I can turn turn it on and see if it where exactly it dropped, you know, because it needs to be at a certain temperature. at least I passed the I'm above so I'm in about 20 degrees so two and a half pounds I'm gonna go ahead and maybe do okay so so far I've put in about four pounds um, I tried to do about I think 3.75 pounds from here 
and then it kind of stopped and uh, I was still very close to 30 you know so I had to increase it above freezing so that's why I'm charging it from the low side which is the suction side so this is a, that's why I see all the condensation which is uh, I'm trying to get it above 32 As long as the gauge is above 32, it's not going to freeze. At least the inside is not going to freeze. Now about 4.14 pound in there. So I think at this point I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start checking the superheat. I'm gonna charge it a little bit more. I think it's now it's a good point for me to check the superheat. You can feel mine is nice and cool. I wanna get my gauge, check the superheat. Okay, so I've charged my system enough and what I want to do is disconnect everything. So what I did was I closed down the valve down there and uh, took my meter off, you know, I'm done. I put like about four, four pound or something um, and uh, tightened this up so it's closed, the valve is closed over there and um, believe it or not there is a lot of liquid on this line, you know, that what we need to do is uh, put that back into the system. Um, so what I did was I closed on this valve, the red one, the high pressure one is closed and uh, since this is closed, what I'm doing right now is uh, the suction line is open and what I'm doing is right now I'm feeding it right from here into this. So kind of like charging the system similar way like we were doing with the bottle but now instead of coming from here, it's coming right from the red one. and. Uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to open up this right here and what happens is we can open this and start charging the system right from here little by little so and same thing is going to happen so basically now it's sucking the refrigerant right from this line from here and it's charging in from as a vapor side into the suction line and do that until you know think you have done enough you know and then you can disconnect the hoses now my system is uh, completely charged um, I installed new caps at the end um, I would recommend if you're serv servicing your um, equipment it's better to install new covers uh, it just helps prevent any leaks I also installed a new cover on the suction line that you can see if that is uh, not good uh, you can it can affect your superheat so make sure you guys take your time and uh, replace that and uh, you know I just still have to finish this side but uh, next step that I need to do is to check my superheat and that that is a very important step after charging your system superheat is very important I'm using superheat because I have a piston in this one I don't have a TXV so it all depends if you have a TXV then you need to check the sub cool I have a video in my description below which will show you how I did my superheat. For this video I wanted to show you guys how to properly charge your system with a proper vacuum. So uh, if you're interested in how to check the superheat, check my link below. Hopefully you guys like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.